Hello everyone, welcome to Coders Camp. So we are today going to cover minimum adjacent swaps to reach the kth smallest number. This is a problem that is asked in lead code contest. So here the input given is a string which consists of integers and an integer k. So here we need to return the minimum number of adjacent digit swaps that needed to apply to num to reach kth smallest wonderful integer. So let's understand this problem with an example. So let's consider a smaller example than given in the problem statement. So a number is said to be wonderful if the number is the permutation of the given number num and which is greater than num. So here if you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the next permutation or the next wonderful integer of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is going to be. So we have to find the kth wonderful number for the given number. So in that case, for the second permutation, we are going to put 1, 2, 4, 3, 5 is the second wonderful number or second permutation of the given number and 1, 2, 4, 5, 3 is the third permutation of the given number. So this is the actually third wonderful number of the given in input number num. So here we need to find how many swaps required to form the given number to target or the kth wonderful number of the given number. So in this case the given number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the kth or third wonderful number of the given number is 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. So here in the given number if we are swapping 4 and 3 then it is going to become 1, 2, 3, 5, 4 and if we are swapping 5 and 4 then finally it is going to become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we actually did 1 and 2 swaps to reach this state. So that is going to be our output. So how are we going to approach this? This problem seems to be difficult but actually if you divide this into parts and understand how to approach this problem it is going to be very easy. So now this problem can be divided into two parts. The first part is finding the kth permutation or kth wonderful number of the given number. So to find kth permutation we have already covered a problem next permutation of a given integer from lead code. So this problem is nothing but we have to find the next permutation of a given number. So here in this case we are going to find kth permutation. So in this case we have to call the same function next permutation again and again for k times so that we will be getting a target number which is the kth wonderful number of a given number. So I have explained in detail about the logic and the code of next permutation. So here also we are going to apply the same logic and call the same function k times to get our target. So this is the first half of the problem. The second half is we need to find the swaps needed to match the given number to target. So let's see how are we going to approach this. Since I have explained enough in my previous video about the next permutation, I'm not going to go deep into this solution. Instead, I'm going to explain the overall idea of how to find the next permutation and move on to the second half of the problem that is how many swaps needed. So now here we are going to see how are we going to approach or find the kth permutation of a given number. So consider this example, what would be the second or next permutation of the given number. It is 4, 5, 1 because we have swapped 5 and 1 to its position. So what is the next number to this number which is 2, 5, 1, 4 because we are done with having 4 in the third place and shuffling the rest of the digits. So once we are done with all possible combination of these two digits, now it's time to switch to find all combination of last three digits. So in this case, we are done with 4. So the next series that is going to start is from 5. If suppose your number is going to be 204, what would be the next permutation of a 204? So in this case, what are the higher numbers than 204? It is going to start from 204 to 299 and 300, 300 to 399. But all these numbers cannot be a permutation of the given number because they are not having the same digits as 204. So again it comes 400, 401 and 402. This is the next possible or next permutation of the given number 204. So what we did here is we found the next higher number that is nothing but once 2 is done the next higher number in the given digit is 4. 
So we are going to start four series and find the next permutation. Same way, once four is done, the re in rest of the numbers, the next higher digit to four is five. So we are going to keep five in five is constant, and we are going to shuffle the rest of the positions to find all possible combinations, starting with five. So the next number is going to be five, and if we shuffle one and four, and it is going to become five four one. So yes. As I said, the next permutation is going to be 5, 4, 1. So what is the difference or approach you are seeing here? In the series, we are going to find the number and place it as constant and find all possible permutations. Once this is done, once we are done with all possible permutation of these three digits, we are going to replace this 2 or this constant with the next higher digit. So if we are replacing or swapping with next higher digit with 2, then the next higher digit is 4 in this series. So we are going to swap 2 with 4 and 5, 2, 1. So now 4 is constant. We have to find all possible permutation of 5, 2, 1 keeping 4 as constant. So if you find 5, 2, 1, the least number in 5, 2, 1 you can form is 125. So 4, 125 is the next possible permutation here. So we are here following three steps. The first step is finding the increasing subsequence from reverse of the given number. So once we find the increasing subsequence, we are going to swap it with next higher number in the rest of the numbers. Once swapped, once keeping that as a constant, we are going to reverse the rest of the numbers so that we'll get a next permutation. By following these three steps, we are going to find the next permutation of the given number. So here, at each step, we are going to find the next permutation, but we need the kth permutation of the given number. So in that case, we are going to perform the same operation for k times. So that we'll get a target number, which is the kth wonderful number of the given input. So by having this target number, we are going to compare with the given original number and find how many swaps needed. So if you want to learn more detail about the coding and iterations of this logic, you can check the video given in the description. Moving to the second half of the problem, now it's time to find minimum swaps required between the given input num and our target num. So consider our given input is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the target we achieved or the third wonderful number is 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. So we are going to find how many swaps needed to form or to make them equal. In this case, we are going to get the help of two pointers, i and j, pointing at the original and the target integers. So i and j are going to iterate simultaneously till it meets the number where there is a difference. Because if the numbers are same, we don't need a swap. So we are moving our pointer i to 2 and 1 and 2 are same. So we don't need any change in them. So again, moving on to the third position where the numbers are different. So here, since the numbers are different, we definitely need a swap in this place. So now our J's job is to find the original number at the place I. So here at I, the value is 3. So in this case, J is going to travel through that array to find where is 3. So now we are moving or j to find where is 3. It is moving to 5, it is not 3. So again, it is moving to next position where it found 3. So once it found 3, it is making 3 to move to its actual position. So actual position of 3 is where i is. Till j meets i, it is going to move 3. So once we swap it with its previous position, it is going to swap once to the previous position and j also move along with 3. And we so far did one swap. Again, it has to meet i's position. So j again doing a another swap. So once it done one more swap, 3 came to its actual position where it has to be. That is where i was the same position 3 came in here in the target num all as well. So now so far the swaps we did is 2. So yes, now both of the numbers are matched and we counted the swaps. It's time to move both the pointers i and j simultaneously to find the next different number. So it is moving to 4, they both are same. And again, it is moving to 5, they both are same and the iteration completes. So, so far the swaps required to make them equal is 2. So if suppose on the way, 
if any numbers are different in that case j again move to find its position and bring it back to the original position and count this swaps so this is how this algorithm works and overall it is going to take big o of n square time as finding the next permutation is going to take big o of n and the second half of the problem is again going to take big o of n time so let's go to code now so yes as the given input is a string we are going to convert that to character array and we are going to call our next permutation function k times so that will get a target integer so once we get the target we are going to pass on to the next function minimum swaps and find the minimum swap and return it so now let's spend some time in writing the methods so we are going to use a lot of reverse and swap so we are going to first write those methods so that we'll finish the other methods later hopefully you understand the reverse and swap logic so i'm not explaining that in detail So yes we are done writing our reverse and swap method so first write our next permutation method now So inside next permutation as i said we are going to check from reverse whether there is any increasing sequence or first increasing number So if we find that number in that case we are going to swap the digit with next higher number and once we are swapped finally going to reverse the rest of the part of this target so that we find the next permutation and we are going to call k times and find our target so now let's write minimum swaps needed so here i'm going to iterate through my given array till the numbers at i and j dif are different so if they are different j is going to move till it finds the match so once it finds the match it is going to swap the number to its previous position till it again reaches back to i's position and the pointer j moves along with that and count the swaps finally return the number of swaps and that is the output we needed so now let's run and try so let's submit So yes the solution is accepted and runs in 20 milliseconds so thanks for watching the video if you like the video hit like subscribe and let me know in comments thank you